Today I'm going to answer a question by a student who goes by the name of Blackrock City. And his question comes from the video on op amp inverting amplifiers, such as I have drawn here. And the question is simply, can I show a practical application for the circuit like I did for the non-inverting amplifier? And I think what you're getting at is the way I explain the circuit, which I think the way most people explain it, is how the circuit gives us amplification but also changes the polarity of the input. So let's make this a practical circuit. I'm going to give it a gain of 2 by making a 2 to 1 ratio of these resistors. So that's one reason that this circuit is popular. You might use this in the same place that you use a small signal amplifier, and I'll link the video on small signal amplifiers below and up here. And with a small signal amplifier, there's a lot of complications to calculate bias resistors and such for your transistor, where using an op amp is so much easier. So for audio frequencies and frequencies below 1 megahertz, where op amps play nice, uh, they are very easy to use. So why not? Instead of trying to do a small signal amplifier that takes a lot of calculations, just pull out an op amp from your little bin of uh, circuits and there you go. Now you might want to use a small signal amplifier for something that's in production where you need to cut costs, but most of the time I'm not going to do that. So there's my circuit. So the way I explained it was, well, if I put in, oh, let's say plus two volts here, I have a gain of two, so I'm going to get four volts out. But because it's an inverting amplifier, and I explained that in the video, I'm not going to do it here. If you want to fully understand this, be sure to look at the video on this amplifier, which I have linked below and up there. And we'll see that this configuration gives us a gain of two, plus it gives us the opposite polarity. So two volts in minus four volts out. And your question is probably, what good is that? And my answer is, I really don't know. I don't know off the top of my head where I might use this. I did a search on the internet to see where some people might use that. came up empty. So uh, there might be a use for it. If anybody knows, go ahead and put that in the comments. I'd be interested to see how somebody's put that to use. But that's not the way the circuit is typically used. Typically, it's used as a audio amplifier or other frequencies that are below 1 megahertz. So it doesn't matter that it inverts. And so it's just a very quick and easy amplifier to make. All I need to do is choose my ratio of resistors, and that's my gain. Now, you might also do the same thing with a non-inverting amplifier. The only difference is that if I use the same ratio of resistors with a non-inverting amplifier, my gain would be 3 instead of 2. You have to add 1 to your ratio to get the gain for your non-inverting amplifier. So uh, why would I choose one over the other uh, for this particular application? Uh, I really don't know. So as an audio amplifier, you're going to get an audio signal in here or maybe something you know above audio frequencies, but I'll just put a microphone here just because that's one place you can get audio frequencies. And so as sound comes into that microphone, I'm going to get waves of many frequencies. I'll just show a simple crude sine wave here. And because it's an inverting amplifier, I have a gain of two, so my signal is going to be twice as big coming out and inverting. So when this goes up, my output's going to go down and vice versa. And the fact that it inverts doesn't really matter. The next stage is probably going to invert it again, no matter what you're doing. And as long as you're not having multiple signals coming together where they might get out of phase, we have to monitor that and make sure everything comes together in phase. If you just have one signal, then uh, there's really doesn't matter. So it's just a very simple amplifier to make, and there's a practical use for the inverting amplifier, but the fact that it's an inverting amplifier doesn't really matter. I might use a non-inverting amplifier, which if I redraw this, I make it a non-inverting amplifier by just moving the ground and the input. There's the ground there. Now the input's there. Now it's a inverting a non-inverting amplifier, and so now I have a gain of 3 because your gain is going to be the ratio of resistors plus 1. And so it's not going to invert. So I just have a bigger output. And why would I use one over the other? Uh, under this configuration, I would have a hard time explaining the real advantage of one over the other, except for some reason I might worry about the calculation of the gain uh, a little differently. But I really can't see a, a real practical reason to use one over the other. 
in this particular configuration. Now one thing I can do with the non-inverting amplifier that I can't do with the inverting amplifier is I can eliminate this power supply. It takes two power supplies to run either circuit, but I can eliminate that on the non-inverting amplifier by making that a ground. The problem is now it's going to act like a rectifier because the voltage can't go below ground, but with the non-inverting amplifier, I could put some bias resistors here. And maybe raise this up to plus 5 volts. And well, I need a coupling capacitor now. See, it's starting to get a little complicated. And so even this is going up and down, centered on 0 volts. Now it's going to be centered on 5 volts. And as my output is going to be, once again, centered on 5 volts. So I can go above 5 and below 5. And I will need a coupling capacitor to eliminate that plus 5 volts and put my output back centered on 0 volts. So I could do that with the non-inverting amplifier, or if I try to do it with the inverting amplifier, as this voltage goes up, that tries to go below 0 and it won't work. So that's an advantage of the non-inverting amplifier if I want to go through the complications to eliminate one of my power supplies. But if I'm not worried about that, which one would I use? I have a hard time coming up with one reason to use one over the other if I'm not trying to eliminate the second power supply. So there's your answer. Uh, I just turned this into a non-inverting amplifier. So let's go back to what we had before. Here is our inverting ampli amplifier. There's our input. Output's going to be inverted, gain of two. And so there's a practical application, just an audio amplifier. And the fact that it inverts doesn't matter. So we talk about it when we talk about the DC biasing to explain how it works. But in practical application, we're not worried about the fact that it actually inverts. So once again, if someone has a practical use for a DC inverting amplifier where I get the change in polarity where that's useful somehow, please put that in the comments. I'd like to see that. Otherwise, there's your most common and most practical use for the inverting amplifier. So I hope that answered your question. If it didn't, please ask again. I answer as many questions as I have time for, and sometimes other people jump in and answer them for me. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.